Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we don't have a problem. Today, we want to talk about energy and simple harmonic motion and how that works. Now, if you recall, when we talk about energy, energy, there's two kinds of energy, potential and kinetic, right? And so potential energy, if you think about it in our old way, was energy of gravitational is mgh, and kinetic is one half mv squared. But when we talk about harmonic motion, these equations are similar to what we want, but not exactly. Let's take a look at this graphic right here. So in this graphic, we've got um, you know, a, a spring system. So we've got a spring system, so the spring's going back and forth. And it has the most kinetic energy, if you think about it. The most energy is um, when it's furthest um, pole, right? And then you have a velocity coming in this direction, right? In this stage right here. And then it gets a little bit bigger velocity. And then as it bounces back, it's got a little bit of velocity. And then it eventually goes to no velocity. So if you think about energy, the total energy, or what we said earlier, we could talk about our mechanical energy, is equal to the kinetic plus the potential. U is the potential energy. And so it's important, that, and then remember we learned that there's this thing called the law of conservation, which is that energy has to be conserved. And so the kinetic plus the potential has to add up. But usually the way you do these problems is you calculate the full either kinetic energy or something like that, and then you um, add them up, and then you can like solve for something else. I mean, you'll see when we do an example. So when we think about the equations, so from our equation sheet, our master equation sheet, what we've got here, we've got three kinds of oscillators that we'll talk about. We've got the horizontal, the vertical, and the pendulum. But if you look at the kinetic energy equation, the max kinetic energy, one half mv squared, one half mv squared, one half mv squared, but it's the v max, right? But the potential energy is a little different. It's going to be one half ka squared in the first one and the second one, but the third one is mgh. So depending on what type of a system you have, you're going to be able to determine um, what type of energy you're going to have. And again, you've got this equation down here, the bottom equation, the total energy or the mechanical energy is equal to u, k plus u, which is one half mg squared plus one half. And oftentimes we say kx squared, where our kx tends to be the amplitude of the motion, at least in the first two instances. So to illustrate this, let's talk about an example problem with a gymnast. Now you can see in the video, this is the vault event. You can see the vault event that the, that the kid's jumping through, the gymnast, and we're interested in the spring that she's jumping on. So let's draw a picture. If you look at this image right here, we've got a 45 kilogram gymnast. We know a number of things. Let's just draw a couple of pictures, kind of like a before and after. So we've got right here, we'll call this the zero mark. And at the zero mark, that's when the, the spring has not been sprung. And then she, when she's at her max height, she's right here at 0.6 meters, right? Now, if you think about it, when she's at the highest height, so she's jumped on the spring, right? And she is at her max height, her final velocity and her velocity at this particular point will be zero meters per second, right? Because she's jumped up on it, she's at her max height, and she's going to jump back down and hit the spring, right? And also, when she gets to this spot right here, to the zero mark, when she first jumps, we're talking about the uh, Vy right away. So Vy will also be equal to zero meters per second here. But she's pointing, she's pointing, right? So that's going to that's picture one. But the second picture, what's it going to look like when she has then landed down onto the spring? Again, we've still got our zero mark, but the spring will be compressed much tighter, and now she's going to be on the spring. And so there's a gap. We're trying to figure out how much will the spring compress based on what we know. Now, we know a couple things about this spring. The spring has 50,000 Newton meters. That's the K, right? And we know her mass is 45. So the first question, what we want to do is, what we're trying to find, by the way, is we're trying to find two things. We're trying to find x, that's that compression, how far does it compress, or x final, we call it. 
and we're trying to find how much time it's going to take for this to happen. So let's do the first one first and then figure it out. So this comes back to essentially a energy question, right? And so what I've done is, watch this here. I know my total energy, sometimes I've called the mechanical energy, for all intensive purposes, what is that equal to? It's equal to the kinetic plus the potential. But at this point, at the very top, if you think about it, she has no kinetic energy. She's moving at zero meters per second. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And so all she have is potential energy. And right now it's gravitational potential energy. So the total energy is equal to mgh at the top right here. So mgh, I can take, um, so that's equal to 45 times 9.8 times 0.6. And I get a total of 200 and 65 joules. That's my total energy. Got it? But when I now solve for how far the spring has compressed, let's think about this. How much energy does she have here, or pardon me, here? So what we can say is the total energy, so 265, would be equal to the kinetic plus the potential. Now, she's got kinetic energy because she's still moving at this point. And she also has potential energy because she has compressed the spring a little bit. All right. So I can say this is equal to what's the kinetic energy that she has. Remember from the equation a couple of slides ago, the kinetic energy in the spring um, is one half mv squared. Okay. So that's equal to, in this case, we'll say one half kx squared plus she also has some potential energy because of her height. She's not at the zero mark plus mg. In this case, we'll say, actually, let's not say x. We say y, or actually it's ky squared, where y is the amplitude. If you recall, like in this, in this chart here, the energy is one half ka squared. That's the gap between that's the, that's the gap between this height and this height. See, this is smaller than that. So this is BMG, and this is also Y, not really H. It's the height. But if you notice here, we've got a Y and a Y squared, and we're going to basically plug some numbers in. So if I say 265 equals 1 half times 50,000 times Y squared plus her mass was 45, right? Yeah, 45 times 9.8 times y. Now, if you recognize this, we've got a y squared and y. We've got one equation and two unknown, and one equation and one unknown, but it's a quadratic formula problem. Now, we could do all the quadratics, or I put it in my solver. Now, when I put it in my solver, warning on this one, there's going to be two answers, and it's important to kind of think through the answers. I find on my calculator that x is equal to either negative 0.11 meters or actually y, I should say, or it's equal to 0 0.09 meters. Now, which one of these two numbers makes sense in light of this problem? Is it negative 0.11 or 0.09? Now, if this is our zero mark, if you think about it, it is depressed underneath. So what's the answer? What's the negative answer? So the answer to the first part, I said xf, I should have said yf, the yf, the final y, is it's going to be lowered by 0.11 meters. Got it? And then that is how we uh, answer the part A. But the second part of the question, we need to answer the question, what is the time? What do they say? What is the final? How long is it going to take to compress this spring? Well, remember, it follows simple harmonic motion. It's a spring. And so if you think I'm trying to solve for um, time, I'm going to use the equation that's t equals 2 pi square root of m over k. I know m, I know k, I know 2 pi. So the mass is 45, the k is 50,000, and I get, now this is the period, this isn't the answer to the question, but the period I get 0 0.0188 seconds. You take 2 pi times square root 45 over 50,000, you get a very small number of seconds. 
But that's still not the answer. The question is, how long does it take to compress a spring? Now, if you think of it as her motion on a spring, as simple harmonic motion, um, the way I thought about it is I drew a graph, okay? So if we think of a graph right here where this is time and this is y, if you think about it, she starts up here at an amplitude of 0.6, and she goes through a cycle like there. And where is she at? Um, she's going to be at the lowest point right here, right? And if a period is an entire cycle from here to here to here, right? So we, it's a sinusoidal type of a thing. And if you think about it for a moment, if you, if you want to go, if she's here, I need to get back to here. So if we go one, two, three, four. It's like in a period, in this period, there are four segments. Segment one, two, three, and four. And then four is right here. So the answer to this, the period, or the time, pardon me, the time that's going to take to do this is one-fourth of the period. And so because it, it's, if you break it into fourths, she, she is at here at one-fourth the time. So one-fourth time, so I just take this times one-fourth. And I get even a smaller number. I get the T final to be 0 0.047 seconds. That's a zero. And it's just a fourth of 0 0.018. Again, the key thing here is you're going to be utilizing these equations over and over again when you're doing the problems um, in class. And keeping track of the numbers is the important thing. Hey, Houston. Oh, I see you here. Houston, we don't have a problem.